morning brother and you don't put too much pressure on me if you put too much pressure on me i'll run away brother yes <laughs> god hallelujah it's hallelujah. it's all about learning from from one another isn't it yes yes yeah yes, let's god. begin with a small prayer our father in heaven holy be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil father god as we come together this uh, this evening uh, we thank you for this grace you've given us to come together every evening for people across the world to listen to your word being broken so that we can grow and bear fruit multiple fold 100 times and 200 times today we ask for the grace especially of uh, what mother mary did when she heard the word she pondered the word in her heart and the word grew in her heart lord we ask for this grace and as we ask we believe that it is already growing the word is growing in our heart in, in a deep way and so that it will bear fruit at the right time as per your will we thank you lord for this grace amen amen so last evening we were studying about the man at lystra right that uh, the man had to hear the word and as we learned in romans 10 17 that word um, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word or the word that is preached the word that is taught in that comes faith means believing the word right. means believing right. the unseen Right. the faith that that god talks about is believing his word and his word is about things not seen right so so when on one side the faith is coming on the other side the enemy is not going to be sitting quiet and watching you uh, you know growing in faith he is also going to come to uh, do some mischief amen amen so we find that the devil also will be on the other side trying to uh, give information and try to trigger people to get into doubts because on one side when the information or the knowledge of the word that is being preached is producing faith in the same way the knowledge and information that contradicts the word of god also is producing fear so there is right. always a battle of faith and fear mm -hmm. is god and what is happening now in india is at a high speed there is a spread of covid and with all these what you hear information it is only bringing more and more fear now if a person is sitting in front of the television and listening to all those news the whole day he does not realize that those are seeds those are um powerful seeds full of fear and that person who has fed himself for a long time with those seeds is now imagination is is thinking everything has begin to increase in that direction so when a person is imagining he is making a point of reference to a particular issue or a particular circumstance and magnifying it so his attention on that is so much strong that it affects his conscious mind that even if he is doing something in his mind that what he is focused on is going on increasing so also this is how a person is producing fear when a person is worried it is a negative meditation and this is a powerful gift that god has given us that you can use meditation or imagination based on the word of god but when a person is feeding his spirit with the lies of the devil or the facts of the world it contradicts the word of god and that's when the person does not realize he is actually growing stronger and stronger in worry 
in fear, which will be bringing forth self-destruction in his life. And that is why it's very, very important that am I giving my five senses to get information which contradicts God's word, then I am ignorantly allowing fear, which is a spirit, to come into me and destroy the faith that I have built and overcome and, and, and take control over my mind and now uh, begin to operate in unbelief. Is God. God. So, so we can see over here that the word of God clearly says, how did this man get faith? How did this man get healed first? By his faith. How did he get faith? He got faith by what Paul preached. So even if I have no faith, it does not matter. But if I can feed myself by paying attention to the preaching and teaching over and over again, might be the same same preaching, the same one, over and over again. That word that I'm hearing over and over again is producing faith. It is changing my imagination. It is destroying my mindset of fear and helping me to grow stronger and stronger in faith. Praise God. Praise so, God. just as the devil brings to remembrance all the doubts, all the unbelief that you have heard in the past, in the same way, in the same way, when you start sitting with the word, the spirit of God also brings to remembrance all that you have learned from the scriptures and all that you have learned, the truths. Because that's why Jesus said, when my word abides in you, you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. But when my word abides in you means when my word is continuing in you. That means my mind, my, my your mind is full of my word. Your thinking is full of my word. Your imagination is full of my word. That kind of process will set you free from anything and everything. Praise God. Amen. So so people might say, you know, uh, during the time of the apostles, there were signs, wonders and miracles happening. But those days are over. The early church days are over. Miracles are not happening today. But nobody will ever say that the faith is not, you know, you know, gifts are taken away. The miracles are taken away. But nobody you will hear ever say faith has been taken away. Faith is there. Praise God. Praise God. And as long as faith is there, the healings and miracles are always going to be there. Praise, Praise God. God. Praise God. So let's go to Mark chapter 5. Marita, are you there? Yes, Papa. Yes. Okay, put that Mark chapter 5. About the woman with the issue of blood. 25. Ahead, brother. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years. And... One minute, I change the translation. Okay. Now, there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had and she was no better, but rather grew worse. Was brother, don't you think today in India, the 26th verse is working? Uh, yeah, I think the, especially the last portion, the growing verse, the, the because, sickness... because, because they are going to physicians. Yeah. Physicians can't do anything. On the other side, they are spending money 
okay yes and huge amount of money situations are not getting better but rather growing growing worse yeah i guess so, lots of people so don't does, have access does, sorry i was saying lots of people don't have access to physicians or uh, medical care also because yeah so 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 things are going worse yes so so when will things grow worse when they hear the good news oh sorry grow worse is it when they have uh, when they don't come to the good news or don't encounter the good news yeah so so in other words when the information inside you is all about the facts the physician saying this is what it is symptoms are saying you are feeling it and all that now your meditation is what on the facts on the facts so any person who is living his life on the facts is on a journey of self destruction okay now let's see how she changed everything then she had heard about jesus was now to hear about jesus did somebody come and give her some information must have been yes other so she how can she hear about jesus yeah but i would so imagine she's not going and gave information about jesus did that person say jesus also gave medicines or he gave the word i would imagine uh, gave the word and healed people correct so yeah. did he use the the medical science style of healing people or did he use a divine style of healing people divine style brother there are three ways of healing one is what the physician gives you a medicine that is something physical which is either in taken by his mouth or through an injection or whatever but that chemical or that substance will effect will play an effect on the body and the person's body gets healed second one is the people who are in witchcraft and occult they also use evil powers to get a person healed but then the person becomes a slave of the kingdom of darkness the third one is the divine healing which is the spiritual healing which is god's healing we use the word of god where there is absolutely no contact with the physical body of any substance the substance used is a spiritual substance called the word and in this substance the power to get a person healed is stored in the word of god so in the divine healing the preacher comes and speaks about jesus who is the creator and this creator has made a system by which when a person agrees or believes to his word there is a supernatural manifestation of healing now there is no issue when a person is doing one and three the first one is is going to the physician as well as he is taking the divine healing excellent but a person who is doing second who is going to the call which craft going to other sources other than the creator then that is extremely extremely dangerous so here is a person who has come and given information to this woman that i have seen with my eyes that this person named jesus is healing people to the extent i even saw him raise the dead now when she is giving now somebody is giving her this testimony is it going to affect her yes no hope, hope will rise in her so so now she is believing that hmm. and with this new information she is renewing her mind and is she saying if i touch his clothes i will be made whole now the question is if she is planning to go and touch his clothes she is going against the law yeah she is going against everything she is going against the natural law is that she is so weak how is she going to get up and go right how is she going to walk that distance how is she going to find jesus is address there are so many things but she is not bothered about that she has planted the seed okay 
by thinking that she wants to go and the bible says she heard about jesus and she came behind behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak now here the key word is in the verse 28 for she said if i touch his clothes i will be made well so when she's saying when she's saying that staying is a meditation you are saying what you're thinking you are saying what you're believing and what you're thinking believing and you are saying activates the spiritual world and that activation of the spiritual world brings about a change in the physical world now even though she's suffering from 12 years she is not asking a question who's going to take me where can i find the help where can i find jesus's address what if people will recognize me and when they recognize me that i've got a bleeding problem they will be stoning me to death now all these factors are there but she has thrown all those factors aside she is focused only on one thing i will go and touch his garment and i shall be made well what do you think about this brother in today's world do you think do you think people will do that no unless i think the word has to be preached strongly to them and their minds have to get transformed so is it that the person preached only once and then the woman took over there what was given to her and she kept saying to herself yeah looks like that so so is meditation uh, does meditation has something to do with self talking yes because now when we are preaching there is one person preaching so you will say there is only one person talking no everybody is talking right. but everybody is talking self talking where the words are not coming out but they are talking in their mind as they are receiving the information right. some of them are saying wow i never knew this so they are making a note of it and saying i'm going to practice this some of them are saying no i don't accept it i reject it but somebody everybody is talking and the talking is called self talking now this woman is self talking with words others it would have come she thought in her mind no no she said she said means she opened her mouth and said now when she was growing worse she was a bad conductor from a bad conductor the power doesn't flow but when she started saying what she heard she became a good conductor that's a very powerful truth when you open your mouth and keep saying what the lord said and keep meditating on it from a bad conductor you become a good conductor from the situation which is worse you become you change the situation to better in other words your current situation might be the worst of the worst but when you start the system of speaking and imagining what the lord said you are actually creating seeds you are actually planting seeds for your future not necessary your present has changed your present is still worse no change but the seeds that you are planting is planting for the future the devil wants to beat you up at the game of reminding you of the past and reminding you of the present but a person who wants to grow from worse he wants to grow the best he understands that he has to plant the seed first and what is planting the seed today he is creating his future for tomorrow amen so when he is planting the seed continuously he is being changed from a bad conductor to a good conductor and that's when everything begins to change so here is the lord showing us in the word that if a person is trying to change his physical situation he must do like the woman did she prepared herself by exercising a faith by speaking what she desired 
She did not speak what she did not desire. She spoke what she desired. That's faith. When you speak, what you see is a fact. When you speak, what Jesus spoke is a truth. So when a person is speaking a truth, even in the worst of the worst situation, the truth has the power to kill that verse and change that verse and, and replace it with a new, not the worst, but the best. That's how the system works of faith. So is there going to be labor? Yes. Is there going to be a lot of labor? Yes. Because that lot of labor has to kill your mindset. The old mindset. Yeah. That old mindset has to be destroyed. And it is only when the old mindset is destroyed and replaced with a new mindset. Now, you have activated your faith. Or your faith will go and get the healing. Now, what if this woman had to be, just put that Baba Marita again, what if this woman had to be in the room where she's going on speaking, growing a faith, but never stepping out? Marita, you can put that again. Brother, what if this woman is saying that 28th verse, but she's not doing 27? Yeah, I think then that she's not acting on her on her belief. Only when you act on so, your belief. So if, can a person stay in a house and keep on growing the faith, but never step out of the house? What will happen? The person will still die. Yeah. So in other words, you are getting the word from the preaching. You are using that preaching by speaking. Yes. But yes. if I'm not putting it into Action. practice, yeah. then all that I've prepared myself will still go wasted. Amen. What do you think? Yeah, unless you start moving in faith. Even though the situation may be against you, you have to start moving in faith, I guess, whatever uh, you are led by the Holy Spirit and led by the Word. That That is important. Very, very important. So, as she is doing this process, why, why, how come this lady is able to stand up and walk to the, to, to go to Jesus? What is the key? What is the system that you see over here? And the same system is applied in every miracle of your life. Every miracle recorded in the Bible, you'll find the same system. The system is the way God created heavens and earth. Let's go back to Genesis 1. And verse number one. Marita, are you there? Yes, yes. Verse number? This is one verse number one. There's some disturbance. The POCO M2 is the mic which is causing disturbance. If you can mute that mic. Genesis 1, Baba. Verse number 1. Yeah, brother, Jude. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. Okay. Now when you see verse number two, is the condition of verse number two similar to the verse what we saw, the woman 
her situation was getting worse. Yes. So here is God who has got a situation that everything has gone worse. And when everything has gone worse, he has to put things right. Now what did God use to put things right? It was the word. So, when God faced a problem, he used the word to fix it. Right. And you and I are created in the likeness and image of God. Right? Right. So if God changed his worst situation by using the word in the beginning, in the same way, you and I, who is going through any kind of situation right now, I must learn to use the word to change my situation. Amen. So the word is a spiritual thing because you cannot see my word, but you can definitely hear my word. So when I'm speaking a word, I'm using my mind to communicate to you and to give you the video or my imagination or my belief stored in the word which is transferred to you. Right. So, so when you are receiving my word, you are taking that word and trying to understand what I'm saying by using your mind, which is now decoding that word and trying to understand what is the imagination in that word. So we release our imaginations in the form of a sound which is called as the word. Okay. So now when you are releasing the word, you there is an option. You can either release faithful words or fearful words. So the substance inside the word can be faith, can be fear, or can be even empty. How strong are you imagining and speaking decides the strength in that word. Right. So in the verse 3, when God said, let there be light, very, very clear it is that in verse 2, there was darkness and there was chaos all around. But God is not looking at any of those things. He is focused on his own imagination and he's saying, let there be light. So even though there is darkness, God doesn't speak about darkness. He speaks about light. So when he's speaking about light, the word is released out of his mouth. In faith, let there be light. And now, there was light. Now from let there be light to there was light, it is from the spiritual to the physical. Right. Now there was light is physical. Right. Let there be light is spiritual. Yeah. So there is a journey from the invisible to the visible and that journey is where the Holy Spirit was hovering over the waters, is taking action over those things and turning those things in the physical to bring light into this world. Yes. So also you see in verse 3, very, very powerful, important sub point is that in spite of seeing darkness, God is still saying, let there be light. So the question so, which comes up, brother, on that point, uh, lots of times when we are faced with a negative situation, uh, you know, even if we know these uh, the spiritual truth, sometimes we have to maybe convey the information. Okay, there is there is darkness right now in whatever context. 
So is it that we never talk about it or we just talk about it and then... Okay, now when you have to talk about it, there's a system by which you can talk about it. Okay? When you believe something, you speak it normally, you will speak like this. I know what you told me. Well, I heard what you said. Okay. But this is what I want to tell you. Okay. Have you heard, have you used the word but before? Yes. So I know I got a headache. Mm. But because the word says so, I know that I am completely healed. So you completed with the promise of God, promise of the word. Yes, because you know, whatever you are saying, see, sometimes it so happens the person says, I know God is a creator. I know he is a mighty savior. I know Jesus is alive. I know that. I even know he is able to do impossible things. I know that. He, he can even heal me right now. I know that. But, now the moment he used the word but, he said, something greater is what I want to say after the but. So, if a person wants to convey something, or a spouse wants to say to somebody, to, to, the, to the spouse, so he's saying, this is what is happening in my life. But I want you to agree with me that this is not what we are accepting. We are believing that this is what God said in his word. So have you conveyed the message? Yes. yes. But have you believed the message? No. No. You are believing what God said in his word. Yeah, thank you, brother. This is something which has been in our minds for quite some time. Because other, otherwise, you won't be able to uh, convey what battles are going on in your right, life. Right, right. So your spouse will say, you never inform me. No, I'm right. not supposed to tell. No, no, no. no. <laughs> you can tell. You can tell. But always remember, use the word but. Yes. So yes. whatever you spoke instantly gets cancelled by, by using the word but. And what okay. you're saying after that is what is getting activated. Right, right. That is why you see the fight that is going on at the border of the land flowing with milk and honey. The 10 spies are saying the facts. Caleb is saying, but let us go and take over the land right now. But then they are saying, but the giants are powerful. But we can still take over the land. But the giants are eating people. We can still take over the land, but you see? Yeah, yeah. And and the people have now to decide what Caleb is saying or the ten spies are saying. They said, they were they they, they believe. We know that God is powerful. Right. We know that He brought us from the from Egypt. We know that we've crossed the Red Sea, but we have decided not to go inside the land. So, the Israelites were not killed by the giants. They were killed by the fear of the giants. They could not make it to the promised land, not because they were not able, but the fear of the giants kept them from moving into the promised land. Does this happen in our life every day? Yes. Every moment. Um, brother. Yes. I have a doubt, brother. So, yes. uh, by faith, we can remove the fear. But if the other person is having that fear, how can we remove that fear from that person? Even this is from about me, myself. Okay. No, no, no. God said, it is. is it God saying for himself? The woman with the issue of blood is saying for herself. Hello, brother. Ah, uh, yes, brother. The woman with the issue of blood is she okay. saying for herself, her condition, or she for, saying for, for for herself? So faith is about all about yourself. 
um but the, the question why i'm asking is my brother in law uh, yesterday he came to know he is positive covid positive mm. so i gave him all this bible message uh, by who, by his own see you are healed and also uh, psalms 103 3 i got in the morning the prayer that uh, he uh, forgives all our sins he, he, he heals all our uh, diseases so i gave him all this message he also reply but still he is having that fear so how can no 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 tell me one thing how many years did it take you to build up your faith um almost more than one and a half years brother before okay. the covid now now with one and a half year you built up your faith okay yeah. your spiritual muscles okay yes brother. and you are expecting your brother in law to speak to him once and get spiritual muscles uh, i understand brother but at this situation where is see brother brother the bible is very clear a house which is built on the sand will collapse because the storm comes suddenly okay. that is why how many times the priest would have said on the pulpit about when when he's teaching every sunday okay now i'll ask you one question at the last moment you exams have come okay and the whole year you did not study now you are saying i want to get first class what did you do all those details uh correct brother but i give this example of the good uh, robber who got saved at the last moment right <laughs> so he died no uh that the so, uh, so uh, I, hold on hold on he he got saved but he yes. died yes your brother in law i'm not talking about your brother in law mm. a person who believes in jesus will get saved yeah but his life will be not right his life mm. will be miserable till he begins to change mm. see baba you are talking two different things one you are talking about salvation which okay. all of us are receiving because we are believing in jesus none of us can can get salvation without believing in jesus so that is 100% assured that a person who died he has received heaven as eternal home but but for that person to experience heaven on earth he has to exercise faith every day okay so is there any fast track i don't know i'll ask you a question is there any fast track in the gym no brother they promise many fast you know, tracks you but know, the work. fast track is what i'll tell you what is the fast track if he can hear one teaching just one teaching over and over again for one day two days three days four days five days he will begin to understand how the principles work okay it is understanding that sets the person free now did jesus say when my word abides in you you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free yes so for the word to abide do you think all these years of other information is going to be watching you Uh, i understand brother but yesterday you told me you know that uh, you went and prayed in a hospital to a person who was sleeping and uh, he got healed i i you know that healing is the mercy of god okay see god is merciful he, now now what do you think when i got healed was it my faith no god's mercy so god in his mercy is healing everybody okay but after that if a person is not building up his relationship with jesus see what we are doing you know we as humans we don't want to have relationship with jesus we want the blessings of jesus correct even now even now a prayer is the same a prayer is not that my brother in law should have a relationship with jesus my prayer is even now lord please heal him because our way of coming to god is totally selfish mm. so when our intention is selfish how do you expect things to change correct brother
correct but the example I, you give i'm not saying i'm not saying your brother in law will not be healed i'm not saying that okay what you can do i'll tell you what you can do is what we are learning today no okay you give your brother in law and say i and you will both listen to it over and over again okay it is only when he changes now the woman with the issue of blood when did she get healed when she believed uh, but one point in that also she was pushed to the desperation where she tried everything and there was nothing more she can do so so when she found this opportunity she completely grabbed no, it no no when she found this opportunity did she labor something no she she yeah she went and uh, touched this jesus no no she labored to build up her faith no 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 I'll she immediately i don't know i'll ask you a question supposing you step out of your house okay and people see you okay they stole you to death do you want to step out no so this woman has built up so much of faith that faith gave her the boldness to face the world ha ah, yes brother uh, I, yeah yeah correct this woman spoke to herself god only knows how many times that if i go and touch his garment i shall be healed this woman cannot take anybody's support she can't touch anybody neither anybody can touch her she is declared unclean when i go to heaven i want to go and meet this woman yeah me too because in that condition she is not sitting and grumbling who will take me how will i go no none of those questions asked she heard now i'll ask you a person who has got 12 years of sickness okay that sickness is told that lady i will never leave you nor forsake you i will be with you till you enter the grave now to fight that fellow who is there inside for 12 years what is she saying if i just touch his garment i shall be healed you know what she's learning to concentrate on what she heard and not what she is feeling correct now you are exercising your faith now you are looking at your brother in law or you are believing in what jesus said what jesus said so why are you bothered whether the brother in law is looking at you or not looking you believe in what you jesus said no? so you should be addressed no correct brother my question was how to uh, uh, take that fear away from him and uh, give faith Okay. How does fear come? Uh when you believe in facts. So when you are believing in facts, how many years he is living on facts? All his life. Yes. Now what has become a stronghold for so many years? You are expecting to break it in 24 hours? I I completely understand brother, but the situation Now when you, you said I completely understand but You see yes. how we are using the word but. You see, B- but I also believe that Jesus will never fail. That God uh, will. No, no, hold, uh, hold, 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 hold. Don't, don't put Jesus in between. Jesus okay. is very clear in his words. Your faith has healed you. But there is a situation where he heals a person without permission, brother. Sorry? there is there is one instance where jesus heals a leopard uh, one person without asking his permission hello he is uh, he is asking the le- the leper no did the leper say lord please heal me no acha another thing can a leper come out in the open no the leper said if you if you will you can heal me If you read that correctly, the leper said, "Lord, if you will, you can heal me." And uh, the Lord that, said, "Yes, I will." No, not that one, brother. I told wrongly. The person uh, whom will be uh, sitting near a, a pond thing, and uh, Jesus will ask, uh, "Why?" Uh, so this person will say, "Was sitting uh, there for thirty-eight years." Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Jesus asked him, "Do you want to get healed?" Yes. Uh, but he will not say yes brother in that time okay he he will say so so so, so now I my heal? question is my question is jesus healed that man okay 
that man still had a desire to get him. He waited for 38 years, Correct. but he did not know the system. Yes. But his focus was that I want to get him. He was yes. helpless because he was saying nobody is putting me in the water. Before I can go, somebody else is putting, going in. But his expectation was to get healed, no? Correct. So 38 years he was focused on that, no? Yes. See, brother, we can give all things round about. But one thing you see in the Bible, in the New Testament, everywhere there is only one line. Your faith has Nowhere I read, your prayer has healed you. Have you ever heard? Okay. So we can go on talking and talking and talking and talking. Simple thing is, you go, tell your brother-in-law, we will listen to the teaching. Okay, okay, brother. So when he's learning the teaching, Remember, you don't need much faith. You need faith how much? As small as a mustard seed. Okay. So if he can give his attention to the word, even at the last moment, everything can turn around. Sure, brother. Sure. But I... don't say, I will pray for him and he doesn't understand what is happening. No, no, I didn't say that. I put in the message itself, by Jesus, in Jesus' name, you are healed. Ah, you, when you said that, does he understand? Uh, I'm not sure. I'll ask because... you a question. When you get a positive report now, what is your faith level, brother? My faith level is strong. Because you built up in one and a half year, right? Yes. Now, do you expect the person to become like that? I so what honestly, do I don't know what is his faith level. Listen, is. listen, what you need to do is you go and teach him the word, okay. not teach him the ultimate thing by the wounds of Jesus. You're healed. But he doesn't understand what's the difference between faith and fact. Okay. okay. He doesn't understand what's the difference between fact and truth. Okay. If I have to ask you, what's the difference between a fact and truth? What would you say? Uh, uh, the difference between fact and truth, brother. Hmm. The fact that uh, coronavirus is real and you can get infected is the fact. But the truth is, by the blood of Jesus, I will not get virus. Even if I get, I will be healed. It will not affect me. Because by the blood of Jesus, I am saved, healed. Uh, the difference between a fact and a truth is, facts are temporary and they are always bound to change. Okay. The truth is, no matter what happens, it is the same yesterday, today and forever. So okay. My, so when a person is billing in facts, he is already in a losing team. A person okay. who is believing the truth, the truth has the power to kill the fact. Okay. And replace that fact with a new fact based on the truth. Okay. So when a person understands the system, then he's able to fight the case with truth. Okay. Are you understanding? Yeah, I yeah, understood, brother. I understood. Uh, I'm, so my, for, my... Example, for example, for example, in verse number two, you saw there is darkness. Okay? But what is God saying? Let there is light. It. Now, how many times your brother is thinking in to himself that he's suffering from COVID? More... I don't know, but he might be thinking because... No, of no, you might be knowing. Don't say yeah. you don't know. You you can see faith, you can see and fear also. If you yes. don't know, then you don't know whether he's operating in faith or fear. No, I came to know, brother. I didn't speak to him. I came to know from my sister that he... Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. whatever it is. Yeah. Now, if a person is only talking darkness okay, and you're expecting light to come, will it come? No. So all this you have to teach. Okay, brother. Only when you teach the system right, then when he opens his mouth and says, now I understand why by the wounds of Jesus I'm healed, 
because Jesus has paid the price for me on the cross. And I'm going to say what Jesus said and not what the COVID is saying. Correct, brother. Okay. Uh, yeah. So that to speak, he needs understanding. Correct. And that Honest... understanding comes by the preaching. Otherwise, why should you need a preacher? Yeah, honestly, brother, I believe uh, even that is a good thing because there is a verse. Uh, it, it is good that uh, I got difficulty so that I am able to know the God's plan. Yeah, so yeah, same yeah. way. That, that is good, but that is who is saying, David is saying where he has got a relationship with God. Now, when a person has got no relationship and doesn't know the word and the bad thing has happened, the bad thing will kill him. Okay. But what I believe is... In the is... midst of that bad thing, listen, listen. In the midst of that bad thing, if you go and teach him the word, the knowledge of the word will become a good thing that it will bring a change in a person. Okay. Bad okay. things don't change people. No, they, they, this many is what I was about to say, brother. That, that sickness, many a times people will say that sickness has brought me close to God. Sickness cannot bring you close to God. Sickness was meant to kill you. But in the midst of that sickness, God sent a man of God who preached to you the gospel. And it was the gospel that you were not ready to hear when everything was good. Now you are ready to hear that gospel which renewed your mind has brought you closer to God. Praise God. So exactly that is what I mean, brother. You become receptive. When you are in difficulty, you become receptive to the good news, right? Otherwise, but you don't that, listen. At that time, brother, listen, listen. When a person is in difficulty and you are sharing the word, but if the sharing of the word is not right, okay, that also is a big problem. Okay. Because that's why the preaching of the gospel is so important that you preach the truth, not the facts. Okay. If a preacher is preaching facts, he's preaching from his mind. There's no signs and wonders. But the, the another preacher is coming and taking the same, same words and preaching the truth. There are always signs and wonders. Yes, praise God. That is why just because the preacher preached, the word is not confirmed. True. The word is confirmed when the preacher has led the people to believe from the unseen to the seen. I completely agree, brother. Even to, to tell you the truth, I was a very fearful person. I had fear, even though I prayed and prayed and prayed, I always had a fear of God that something may happen if I do this, if I do that. But after listening to your uh, uh, videos, everything, and after I got healed miraculously of my knee pain, and, uh, and also one uh, brother taught me, don't fear God, love God. So create a relationship with God from because love takes away all the fear away. When you have fear, then uh, still you haven't created the relationship with God. Then after uh, started having love with God, then really uh, thank God that the whole fear is gone from me. Praise God. Praise God. So can I continue my teaching, brother? Uh, thank you, brother. Thank you. Praise God. Thank you, brother. But this has really helped. Don't feel guilty. Okay, okay. Brother. thank you. I'm yes. so happy that you came. We had better discussion. Okay, it thank has you, really brother. helped. What do you say, Jude? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm, huh? sure these, I'm sure these questions would be going in several of our minds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, because see, brother, at the last moment, you're trying to pump into yeah. a person uh, faith. The question is, how many years did it take you to build, build yeah. believe the word of God? At the last moment, there's one thing that you can do. You can go and show them a small portion of how it works and play the same thing again and again. Don't change. Okay, brother. So, so when you play the same thing over and over again, 100% there will be a change. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing the, of the word of God. So that is, a, that is the advantage. So if the preaching is going on again and again and again, good news is faith is coming in. When faith is coming in, unbelief is going out. It's like clean water is coming in, dirty water has to be flushed out. But see that you keep the clean water flowing continuous. Don't close the tap. And that is the, 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 the 
uh, Genesis 1 3 is the key to anybody's future. I can see with my eyes darkness. I can see with my eyes symptoms. I can see with my eyes troubles. But yet I choose to speak what God said. That's faith. Physical evidence is going against me. But spiritual evidence is saying that God is with me. So what is my confidence in what I'm speaking? Because I might say, by the wounds of Jesus, I'm healed. But the confidence level is very low. Will it work? No. Because the Bible says, do not cast away your confidence because through confidence comes reward. And that is the key. And that is why the Bible says, God said, let there be light. And there was light. So, destroying darkness and replacing it with light, God used word mixed with faith and the Holy Ghost. If you see in that verse 2, put that verse 2. The verse 2 is saying that the Spirit of God was moving over the waters but did not get into action. Marita? Hello? Yes, Papa. Yep, just put that verse number 2, Baba. Genesis? Genesis 1. Genesis 1, 2. Are you attending two classes? No, no. Yeah. Brother, read, brother. The earth was a... Read. The earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. So the wind from God is the Holy Ghost moving over the waters but doing nothing. Moving over the waters can we be also saying he is like a mother hen incubating the eggs. Mm -hmm. So the incubation is going on. Okay. But the moment God said the word, everything changed. So, God is saying, your future is in your tongue. Your future is in your mouth. And what you think in your mind, when you speak the word, you are releasing your imagination. So, you can be saying, by the wounds of Jesus, I'm healed. But full of fear, that word will still carry fear. Even though the word is right, the substance inside is not right. Thinking is opposite. So, is it possible that the bottle is saying milk, but inside the substance has been put something else? Yes. Now, when you bring a, a certain boxes, okay, you use that empty box. Right. Okay. On top, it will be saying tea box. But right. inside, the, some other thing will be there. Right. Possible, brother? Yes, yes. The same it is with a person who is saying, by the wounds of Jesus, I am healed. But inside, there is no faith. There is only fear. Hmm. Will it work? Just the Bible verses repetition will not work. Is what you're saying. No. no. Should not work. That is, why, that is why the preaching is so important. Hmm. That through the preaching, a person understands the principles, the applications, how the system of the kingdom of God works. So that when a person understands, now he's studying, now you got the legal in information. Right. Now he has to put the experience, ex knowledge. This is legal, this is experience. Now both have to go together. When they go together, that's the time you will see the power of God manifesting. Okay, there's one more, Maria. Okay, Maria. Brother Johnson, good evening. I have a question. So, yes. um, say, um, say for example, I've had a like a revelation that you know somebody will change in their behavior. Like somebody is a right now a, a bad person, uh, you know, saying bad things, doing bad actions, and things like that. But you had a revelation that the person will change, and you, you know, you've got prompts to pray for that person. Now, mm. when you're dealing with that person, you 
you know, I keep getting angry by that person's behavior, right? And uh, how do you work on this? And how do you, like, while you have faith that the person will change and, um, you know, become a really good person, will turn to Jesus and all that. And how do you not get angry? And some of the actions, you know, tend sometimes to, um, to make you doubt, like if this will happen. So how do you do that? So the first thing is well, you should understand the person who's doing those bad things is not the person who's doing it. But the spirit Correct. operating in that person who has captivated his mind is the one who is doing it. Okay. So your battle now begins to go not on the person but on the spirit. Okay. Once you understand the spiritual world, how it operates, you will understand that your battle is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. So okay. you will not be attacking him, but you will be attacking the spirit inside him. Okay. One question is that, on that. Is that right? Yeah. So understood, brother. So how do you how okay. do you like okay. deal or okay. work with this? Then, 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 very important is. Very, very important is uh, Galatians 5, 6. Put that Galatians 5, 6 or 4, 6. First, we'll start with 4, 6. Faith works through love. No, 5, 6. 5, 6. Yeah, put that. Brother, read. Or sister, read. Sister, read. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything. Mm. The only thing that counts is faith working through love. So, even if that person is irritating you and you're praying day and night, but you are irritated by that person and offended, you know, you are also outside the garden. Mm. What do you mean outside the garden? As long as Adam and Eve were inside the garden, everything was the best. The moment they disobeyed God, they were thrown out of the garden. And the moment they came out of the garden, came sorrow, sickness, disease, everything came. Now that person who is irritating you is already outside the garden. But you are on the receiving side and you are getting bitter and offended. You are now inside the garden or outside the garden? Inside the garden. With your offense and bitterness? No, you're outside the garden. Got it. So if you are outside the garden, will your faith work? It won't. So now, is there a difference between him and you? No, because you are in the same place. Because you are in the kingdom of darkness. Hmm. So when the person understands, I am not focused to change him, first hmm. I have to change me. Hmm. Okay. So you are fighting now the battle of faith to enter inside the garden. Okay. So how do you yes. enter the inside the garden by operating in love and forgiveness? So mm -hmm. once you got that right and mm -hmm. you are inside the garden, now when you start praying for him, surely it will work. So in okay. how many marriages, husband and wife, uh, where there are issues, the wife who is a prayerful wife is praying with agape love or she is also bitter and she's trying to pray. Yeah. Really? I mean, that's the only answer is what you're saying. And yeah, that's the answer. But how many people are practicing? Not many. It's difficult to do that. When I began to teach on godly marriage, there were some people whose marriage was in crisis for 40 years, 30 years, 35 years. And this woman was used to be praying. The spouse is praying. But she's saying, my prayers are not getting answered. When she understood that she's also outside the garden, she stopped focusing on the husband and she started focusing on the Lord that she has to get right with God first. So when she came inside the garden, she began to accept the husband the way he is without, without getting offended but operating in agape love. Because now she's getting love from the father to pour that love into the husband. It did not take long. Within a week, two weeks, the husband is completely changed what did not happen for years? Hmm. When you understand the strategy, what the devil is using, hmm. okay, and now you are using the strategy of heaven, now you win. 
Okay. So how I many understand. people are praying with offense and bitterness? Tell me. Mm -hmm. Almost everyone. Somebody will say, but can a person be free of offense and bitterness? Yes. When you feed yourself with the word of God day and night, okay, your spirit becomes so strong that your emotions don't rule over your spirit. Is it going to take practice? Yes. Is it going to take labor? Yes. Is it going to take time? Yes. But is it go is your life going to be beautiful? It's not going to be beautiful. It's going to be a, a heavenly life which you have never experienced in your lifetime. And okay, what is yeah. amazing, Maria, is that there are some of them, the husbands have still not changed. Mm -hmm. But even though the husband is thrashing them, insulting them, abusing them, they have only compassion for him, but not bitterness or hatred. You know why? Because they've overcome that that uh, um, stage where agape love is at the peak. And the same, uh, same person will be destroying so much of the works of the devil by, by ministering to so many people. But her marriage is not yet healed. Her marriage is not yet healed, but she's ministering to so many, not one, so many of them. Mm. So she's not focused on when will my marriage get healed because in her faith, her marriage is already healed. Okay, brother. Hello? Yes, brother. Got it. So when she's confident that the marriage is already healed, is she relying on physical evidence or in a mind, in the spirit, she's already got a husband change? In her spirit, in the spirit. So she's not moved by physical evidence, she's moved by spiritual evidence. So she has got peace, even in the storm, like Jesus sleeping in the boat. Okay, but at the same time, she's saying, brother, by going and attacking the devil, by teaching others and getting victory, I'm getting more and more confident that the devil is using my spouse to irritate me more. And now my spouse has begun to change because I'm not giving back. I'm not retaliating. I'm loving him more than before. He has no other option because the seeds that I planted in his life is now bearing fruit. Okay. I'm not changing him. I'm not trying to change him. I'm changing me. Okay. And to change me, I'm using faith to change me. I cannot change me with my self-effort. I'll be a loser. Okay. I'm using that Genesis 1, verse 3, when God said, let there be light, and there was light, I'm telling myself, thank you, Jesus, I'm carefree. I'm, I'm free from all offense and bitterness. I love my spouse, and my spouse loves me with agape love. I no longer love him by human love. I love him with your love. Now, is she actually doing it? No, but she is speaking it by faith. Now, will the Holy Ghost get that word into manifestation? Surely. Okay, brother. Is it making sense now? Absolutely, yes, brother. Thank you. This is how the truth works. So, which one came first? There was light first, or she said, "Let or God said, let there be light." God said it first. So which one will change first? You saying first will be first or you will see and then say? Our speaking and our belief. So our first comes speaking, then comes the seeing. But the world will say, first show me, then I will say. Mm -hmm. Whereas the person who is spiritual will say, first I will say what I see in the spiritual evidence, then I will surely see it in the physical evidence. Got it understood, brother. Thank you. So how many people do you find who are practicing Genesis 1-3 and how many people in a Christian life who are practicing opposite to this and their praying is also opposite to this? Most people, I guess. More than 95%. Yeah. But nobody has taught us. And then we begin to wonder, why is God not answering? You are, you are not applying the right principles. Right. So, brother, you said speak the word day in and day out or fill, fill yourself with the word, you know. Hello, hello, hello. 
if the word is the tool to change my physical thing okay will i be using it yes now which one is better you say 100 words which is opposite to verse number 3 and another person is saying only 10 words in line with the word and not speaking the other 90 which one is more powerful the 10 words <laughs> and what if the person is keeping his quiet mouth quiet and the other person is speaking 100 negative words who is which one is more powerful keeping quiet praise god you are learning be- beautifully <laughs> it's very challenging to keep quiet <laughs> because <laughs> now i'll ask you one thing if you understand by you opening your mouth and speaking you are taking a knife and putting it into your own body would you take the knife and put it in your own body no brother you won't but but challenging? brother if you just no, no, think it's challenging no no i'm asking is it challenging i mean if you know what you're doing i mean then you won't do it ah that's why the bible says my people are destroyed because of their lack of knowing nowhere in the bible is it written my people are destroyed by the devil so most of us christians are doing what praying with self destruction of a, or destroying the kingdom of darkness self destruction when you are going to god and talking about your mountain that's that itself is self destruction He said, "Cast it out once and for all. Then don't talk about it anymore. Mm-hmm. Let it be with him." Mm-hmm. Correct? Yes, brother. Yes, God. And thank you for that. Don't don't feel any time guilty by you coming. Do you know how many people are saying, "Thank God for Maria. Thank God for Joseph." I am. Listen, I am not interested in finishing the topic. I am interested in. making a person understand only this principle if he understands only this much in the full 3 hours or in the next 3 days or 4 days no problem that is enough for him to get his victory i am not interested in giving so much i am interested in giving one point but that point you understand and practice and come back you we'll say brother i got result brother what did not happen for years it happened so quickly because now you are applying the right um, Maria, do you drive car? Ah, uh, yeah, I know how to do that. Right. No, no, you drive, right? Yes, I drive. What happens if you put reverse gear and you start praying that the car will go in front? <laughs> It won't. No, no, don't try. Don't try. Put a reverse gear and behind is a wall. Okay, and you say that the car go in front and press the accelerator. Which side it will go? Reverse, because your because, actions and what you're doing. Your application is wrong. even though you are forcing fasting and praying the very application is wrong will it go the right no brother it go put the right gear and then you open your mouth and pray no yes brother got it got it yes perfectly got it thank you brother so vijay has also raised his hand vijay you have a question yeah vijay. brother on the uh, on the same point we were talking about just now how to get out of offense and bitterness so while you are explaining brother you mentioned one thing um make sure that i'm not using self effort to change myself or i will be a loser absolutely absolutely to talk a little absolutely. bit more about that brother okay now when you understand verse number 2 god said let there be light correct yeah uh, baba baba just put that jude just put that baba look at look at that verse number 3 let there be light correct yeah now can god see darkness yes he can so does god have emotions feelings because jesus said the one who has seen uh-huh. me has seen the father did jesus have compassion yeah he did so the father also has got compassion yes 
So he has got feelings, right? So yeah. when he is seeing darkness, did he allow his emotions and feelings to take over? Or did he say, let there be light? Yeah, he just said that there be light. Now in your life, are you operating by emotions? Yes, very much. So, God gave you emotions, but God never gave you emotion to rule over your life. He gave you the truth to rule over your life. Okay. Now, faith, does it have emotions? It goes over emotions. But it doesn't have emotion. It is based on believing what God said, not based on your emotions, right? Yeah, right. So, now when you understand that, now you are saying to yourself, Thank you, Jesus, that I'm set free from all my, uh, I've overcome all offense. I overcome all evil with good. And therefore, I'm set free from all offense and bitterness in Jesus' name. Now, you are meditating on this one line. Okay. I overcome all evil with good. And I thank you, Lord, that I'm free from bitterness and offense. Okay. Now, are you speaking your faith? Yeah, yes. Speaking faith. Yeah. Now, will the Holy Spirit get this into manifestation for you? Yeah. That's how it works. So now, is it self-effort? So, so brother, I had a question there. So, if I, so if I get myself into thinking, okay, I got to keep saying this. I got to keep saying this. So no, that no, no, no. Ends up being self-effort. Listen, listen, listen. Again. Yeah. You are filling yourself with the teachings day and night, hmm. which is making your spirit strong. Hmm. You are not saying one line. Yeah. Please understand. You are first feeding yourself with the preaching and teaching and the word. You are eating the whole biryani. Mm -hmm. You are not eating only a tomato. Mm. I, in that biryani when you are eating, okay, I will put it this way. When you are eating food, say... 2,500 calories. Is your stomach digesting that food? No, not yet. It takes no, no. Time. After, yet, after it yeah. takes time. Yeah. Is it digesting? Yeah. So are you telling your stomach how to digest? Or the stomach knows how to digest? The stomach just does it. Okay. Now, what you gave was a physical food. Is it converting into energy? Yes. In the same way, when a preaching is going on and the teaching is going on and your ears are hearing, you are inputting that much calories of faith. Yeah. Okay. Now that word is the food of the spirit. Now the spirit will convert it into a power called faith. Just yeah. as your stomach converts it into calories. Yeah. Correct? So the now if you are saying only that one line, okay, and you are not eating the full meal, Hmm. How much calories did you put in? Very, very little. So how do you expect the faith to work? Correct. Okay. So now, for example, one and a half hour. You heard the same teaching. Mm -hmm. Again yeah. on the YouTube. And hmm. you heard it four times, five times, six times. And you're paying attention and hearing. Do you think the Holy Spirit will also be talking to you when you're hearing? Yeah, he will. He is. Definitely, definitely. So you heard... 10 point, now the Holy Spirit will give you insight with your own life experience, what you're going through, and now you're applying it in your life, you will be learning 50 more points. Yeah. So the preacher is giving you basic outline. After that, when you sit with the Lord, the Lord will give you thousand times more from that same word. Yeah. Are you following? Yeah, so brother, you're saying, listen, for example, to the teaching, listen to mm -hmm. the teaching multiple times, and the mm -hmm. Lord will speak to us. Mm -hmm. At the same time, you also said, um, thank Jesus, make the prayer of thanks, that mm -hmm. thank you, Jesus, I am, and I, I, I was not able to note it all on, but thank you, Jesus, I'm freed from offense. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. that yes, correct, correct, I correct. Have, I have, I'm now, filled with forgiveness, yes, yes, what, what, yes. whatever. Okay, and, and you're saying keep thanking that way. That's Why are you right? thanking? Why are you thanking? Because Mark 11, 24 is saying, whatever you ask in prayer, when you pray, 
whatever you desire. Just put that, Baba. Cute boy, just put that. Mark 11, 24. If I'm saying to you to do something, I will only say something that Jesus said. I will not ask you to do something which Jesus has not said. Okay, right. read that. 24. So I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. So which one comes first? Believe that you have received it comes first or it will be yours comes first? Yeah, believe that you have received it comes first. So, so now when you are believing that you have received it, so will you be giving thanks to God? Yeah, right. So now will you be Correct. doing... Now, will you be giving thanks to God religiously or with understanding? With understanding. So I, so I, so I listen to the gospel. I listen to the teachings so that I believe. And when I believe, right. I should naturally thank. Not as ah, far as get to a correct, point where correct, I naturally correct, thank. Correct. Because now you are all excited because you have done your part. Now faith will do his part. Yeah. See what what brother Biju, Bijoy. Yeah. Bijoy, the very important thing is you are not forcing to get the manifestation. That's not your job. Mm -hmm. Your job is to focus on your mind. Mm -hmm. To set things right in your mind. Yeah. Your victory is not outside. Your victory is inside. Yeah. To get the work done outside is not your job. To get the job, work done is the Holy Spirit job. Or the yeah. faith job. Yeah. So there are two people working together. You and faith working together. Yeah. Okay. God said the Holy Spirit took that word and changed the physical thing. In the same yeah. way you are saying your faith will go and change the physical thing for you. Yeah. Are you understanding? Yes, sir. We will continue this about the woman Okay, tomorrow, how come the woman could pass through the crowd? Because when, when people come for their own, own healings, nobody is going to allow the other person to go in front. But yet, this woman was able to go through the crowd, being weak, yet she was able to go through the crowd. So how is she going to go through the crowd? We we'll learn tomorrow uh, with the same principle of Genesis 1. So if the woman could reach the destination by what she said, you also can reach the destination by what you say. So the practice is deliberately, purposely open your mouth and keep speaking as you are listening to the teaching. Keep speaking the desire that you have. Now in Mark 11, 24, put that again. Jude. Hello, Baba Jude. He's doing it. Yeah. Now, they just change to King James, Baba. Now, see in King James what he says. Read that, brother. Be joy. Um, 24. Th therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. Now, if your desire are wrong, is it dangerous? Yeah, very dangerous. Because he said, what, what things soever you desire. So before you open your mouth and pray, first check out whether the desire is in line with the word of God. It will surely come to pass. But when it comes to pass, it will destroy you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Brother Jude. Yes, brother. We hardly spoke today. I know. <laughs> but 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 all these questions were very very important. Yeah. It is, uh, you know, thank God for three people coming in, and okay. uh, giving us more because see, brother, this is not a weekly program. That we will meet the next week. Every day. 
so we are not going to uh, lose anything what we learned today tomorrow we'll learn even more better and yes. more things yes because today i'll keep the time i'll not trouble yeah. you <laughs> you are taking the role of jos <laughs> okay so we'll wind up uh and say a word of thanks thank you lord for this beautiful session where you learned so much and especially thank you for uh, brother vijoy brother joseph and sister maria who came yes. forward and asked those questions uh, and uh, that uh, brought so much of good teachings about love about the importance of teaching before we use the word uh so thank you lord uh, that these new teachings or maybe old teachings have uh, once again cementing getting cemented in our hearts and uh, we're learning how to uh, bring about uh, changes in our lives and also to spread the good news into other people's lives and bring them closer to you lord we thank you and we praise you lord amen so thank Thanks you thank you thank you brother see you tomorrow will you brother i'm sorry did i trouble you in any way no hardly hardly huh? <laughs> but i thank god that the, the three people came and made yes. the teach so very yes. interesting so made it uh, very alive today i think yes yes yes, yes. Yeah, i would really? encourage others also to come forward and uh, yes, voice yes. out your doubts so thank you all uh, have a blessed day and see you all tomorrow you, you know you know why i am so confident in this subject but this subject has been paying all my bills through this this what i'm teaching no brother i have been able to build a retreat house the 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 expenses the the things if you ask me where did you get this thing from from it's all from the bible the granite from the bible the chairs from the bible the the construction from the bible everything from the bible so for me this has become my system by which i get everything paid off so the physical things that i need i know that i should go to the bible and use that this substance to create my physical things so that works when you are in working in for the kingdom right yeah 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 but the, but yeah but always the vision and the mission is for the kingdom so i have never had lack brother in the resources and the reason i'm sharing this is this is available to everybody yeah and if a person understands this application he lives a victorious life amen it's a stress free a stress free victorious life but but big battles but one thing is there in that big battles you still be stress free if you apply the principles because the day you understand the tools of heaven are far superior than the tools of the kingdom of darkness yes he who is in me is the greater kingdom than of, who is the kingdom of god's weapons are far 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 superior they cannot be compared with the tools of the devil amen so once you understand that then you are always in a winning team praise god it's like you know going to a, for a match and now the devil has started his bowling and you are using the tools from the heavenly kingdom every ball you are hitting four and six yeah praise god it's it's going to take practice but it's but at least we are not blindfolded we can see mm -hmm. we can we, we you can see clearly how you can turn it around okay thanks thanks again thank you all this thank you brother my favorite subject this has been my favorite subject on faith i can talk for days together praise god and this has been the foundation of my life beautiful brother yes praise god so, praise god so thank you all and uh, have a wonderful please, please join in tomorrow we will we'll continue with the woman and with genesis 1 and we will have so many more uh, examples coming in okay bye 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 and i'll tell you this faith topic can go on for a year but by the time we have finished no brother every person who is a participant within 15 days you will see they'll come and tell you hey my life has changed it's god so now everybody is going to apply the principles 
they will say, oh, this is so easy. The problem is, it is so easy that it becomes difficult to believe it can be so easy. Mindsets have to change. Praise God. So thank you all. Bye. God bless you all. Yeah. Bye-bye.